Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and I've got a little doggy called Finny <laughs> whining at me and staring at me. And the reason for that is because I just spoke to his mummy on the phone. That's the lady that had him before me. And she she had him temporarily for about four months. But he's known her since she was since he was born because it was her stepson. Well my chair's gone weird. It's gone way back. Doesn't really go that, that far back. So <laughs> her stepson is the man, is the person that bred him, that gave birth to him or whatever. Not literally. And then, so she's, he's, she's imprinted on his brain, basically. And then when he was old enough, he went to a lady who purchased him. And apparently she got unwell, so she couldn't have him anymore. So she had to, he had to go back. So he went back to my friend's stepson. And then she decided to look after him for a little while. And yeah, and then, she, then he came to me. She was going to keep him, but he bit her. <laughs> bit, bit her on the cheek. The, the face, one of her face cheeks. And she was worried he was going to bite one of her grandkids. So she, she had to sort of move him on. Which, to be fair, is very understandable. You know, getting bitten on the face. Hard to believe when you look at him, but he has nipped me a few times, not on my face. I dare him to bite me in the face. <laughs> if he nips my ankle, which he has, he's gone a little bit. A few weeks ago, we had a proper falling out, and he did turn on me and he did bite me, but it wasn't, didn't draw blood. But I was very, very upset with it. And in those situations, I put his face very close to my face. Like, come on, do it again. Bite me. He never does. It was backs down, thankfully. But I, I'm trying to let him know that I'm in charge, but without, I don't know. I was so angry. <laughs> I've never been that angry. So, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes, if I haven't already said that. I'm tired. Oh, it's been a long day. I, 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 oh, my website, my permanent website, is now letmeboreyou.com. Letmeboreyou.com. And I'm going to focus on these podcasts. I've been doing one a day for about eight or nine days now in a row. And they do take up quite a few hours of every day to do. Not just the recording, but all the editing, the processing, uploading, all that stuff. So it's it's not just like a, I record it and then upload it and it's done. It's, that's how I used to make recordings in the old days, which is why they were such, such poor quality. Uh, I think I used to record stuff on my phone. Mind you, they were better quality ones than the original ones. Because, yeah, but they take ages to edit sometimes. Yeah. I remember someone years ago saying, you know, can you at least, um, what do they call it? Oh, I forget the name of it. I do it every single day. You know, uh, Go into the to go into the recording and then go out like softly, you know. Start softly, quieter, and then end quieter. I forget the name of it. Why is he squeaking, Vinny? Why are you squeaking? I don't know why he's squeaking. I do know why, because he wants to go and see his mummy. 
She's just been on the phone. She's on an loudspeaker. And I said to her, look, see what he does. As soon as you go, he's going to start barking. So I said, let's say, just say goodbye to me. And I'll, I'll, as soon as I stand up, you'll hear him bark. So she said, all right, bye then. So she stayed on the line. I stood up. Not a sound. I said, oh, never mind. I'll see you later. So said goodbye, hung up for good, properly, stood up. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to stand up. He started going frenzied. Like really barking really loudly. And like, I phoned her up. And she could hear him barking. I said, look, he's doing it. It's, I told you this. He knew that you were on the phone still. He must have done. I don't know. Mind you, she was doing, maybe she was doing a poo and he could hear that. Maybe she wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where. Why, why did that come to my mind? So, so, this is Q&A Friday. So there is a lot of, um, I've got a few questions. I haven't got a lot of questions, to be honest with you. Not a lot. But I've got a few. Because maybe, I don't know, should I stop doing a Q&A Friday? Is it getting a bit boring? Is this boring podcast becoming a bit boring? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, so, hello. Okay, so this is Hi All. Another Q&A Friday this week please leave any questions in the comments so let's have a look at the questions that I have so I don't want top comments I want all comments okay so Diana not a question uh, more like a statement did I read this out Uh, you should be more active on your boring page. I listen every night via SoundCloud. Actively like or love stuff. I think it would be great to interact with you so you know we are there and appreciate what you do for us. Um, I did reply, so I do post all my recordings daily on here. And he said, yes, you do. It wasn't quite what I meant. But hey, got you talking about something other than stats. <laughs> I, I thought everyone loved hearing me talk about stats. I love. I do. I do talk about it. In fact, that's got me thinking. Let's talk. Let's look at the stats today. See, if you hadn't. I'm going to reframe what you put there. And the question is, dear Jason. Please tell us about your stats today. So, okay, really? Okay, then. Uh -huh. So. Today, today, so far, on my Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast on SoundCloud. And it's also available on most of the podcast hosts like Apple Podcast and, uh, I don't know, various different places. Uh, everywhere, probably. So, so far today, May the 3rd, 2024, I've had four... 4,811 plays today. Yesterday I had 2,213. Day before, 1,838. Day before, 1,639. The day before, 2,735. The day before, 2,764. And the day before that, 2,677. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... The last seven days, 16,000 plays. But today's, the, I'm not sure if I've had a better day than this before on that podcast. So that's that. Now to the other podcast, the only other podcast I've got now. So there's a Let Me Boy to Sleep and there's the, I've got other ones connected to this. But this is the only actual podcast. And it's the... I don't know what it's called. Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply. 
Jason Newland in brackets. So hypnosis for sleeping deeply. Um, I've basically deleted all of the Spreaker podcasts because it's not worth having so many different podcasts and no one's hardly listening on there anyway. And what I plan to do on my let let me well basically on the hypnosis for sleeping deeply on SoundCloud I have multiple playlists. Uh for example Sleepy Born Objects Ooh, let's have a look. I need to tidy them up but there's the deep sleep whisper ones, there's the relax and sleep hypnosis daily ones, there are let me bore you to sleep ones there's also the uh, ASMR I ASMR whisper let me bore you to sleep so I can't really find I can't see trying to find them so it takes I mean I've also got playlists on the let me bore you to sleep podcast as well all the Sleepy Born Objects recordings I do, all the Jason's Bedtime Storytime podcasts I do, uh, any ASMR, Whisper, Let Me Boy You To Sleep podcasts, and also any Let Me Boy Your Pain Away podcasts will all be also added to the Let Me Boy You To Sleep podcast. Because they're in that category, they're part of that. They're like breakaways from that. And they'll also be on the, whatever the name of this one is. I should be able to remember it, I'm considering it's mainly my name. Uh, hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. How can I not remember Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply? And then my name. Wow. <laughs> so, so that that's the two podcasts that I now have. That's it. Uh, so there's a link I've got the stop on this hypnosis for sleeping deeply even there's stuff on there and there's going to be more stuff I'm going to make sure that there are playlists for every single thing that I've done you know that I wouldn't that I had podcasts for uh, there's the stop smoking pain relief uh, there's going to be everything will be on there and it'll all be in playlists. And what I will do on my letmeboreyou.com website, I will have a, a page with playlists on. So then you can like click on them and find them. So just make it a little bit easier. So um, I'll tell you what I found weird, not weird, but I get more people more plays on my you thought I was joking about doing the stats no I'm, I'm really going to talk about the stats but it's a and a Friday JJ I know but I get distracted easily you should know that if you mention a horse I'll probably start talking about horses you know I have a child's mind uh, I will get back to the and a Friday I will So the the hypnosis is sleeping deeply. I get more listens of the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcasts episodes than I do on the actual Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast. I've said that for years actually, and I never quite I never quite believed myself. I thought I wonder if I'm just lying or making it up because because I had so many different podcasts, it was quite hard to kind of gauge. However, on here I can see with my own eyes just today. Um, I've got the today's, or it was yesterday's, wasn't it? It's, uh, number 1109, 70s TV, Let Me Boy You to Sleep. 2nd of May 2024. So the one without music, 249 plays. 
the one with music 260 plays the one the five hour one 746 plays and the 10 hour one 425 plays and I'm just I don't know I just don't <laughs> don't quite understand why I mean it's almost like well it's not a lot but it is for me it's quite a lot considering it's not this is not actually the podcast for the let me bore you to sleep and even if we go back just a couple of days uh, I've got some podcasts at 500 plays 623 746 that's what I've already mentioned and 470 523 474 446 312 669 that was that was 8 days ago so that was uh, 25th of April so that was molly 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 667 of those are molly <laughs> no <laughs> the thing is some people say oh yeah most people must be just listening to them over and over again but these are long recordings okay someone could listen to them every night which I know some people say they do but ultimately a 10 hour long recording can only really be listened to once a day or twice a day with a bit of spare change I guess 746 that's weird anyway but I haven't had as many downloads for the whole day or as many plays for the whole day on this one I've had oh I have had more sorry I've had 10,606 plays now it's just lower down because I normally get more uh, yes yeah, so 10,606 so what's that all together what did, what did I have? Seven four thousand. So it's yeah, you know, fifteen thousand for the day. That's all right. I'm happy with that. Anything above ten thousand, I'm all right with. Anything below ten thousand, I'm all right with. <laughs> I'm just. It doesn't matter ultimately. It's just. It just. I feel a little bit more motivated if I believe that people are listening and, and that's it really so the Zencast thing that I was doing I deleted all that because I just thought it's getting complicated I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to juggle I'm not a good juggler and I've realized that it's if I try and really focus and stick to doing one recording a day of the let me bore you to sleep if I try and keep that commitment to you uh, and you know it's it's more doable if I have some kind of a routine so what I've been doing is I make the recording early evening it's nine it's uh seven twenty five nineteen twenty five in the evening it's still light outside blimey I make the recording and the good thing about it is before I used to make the recording then I'd have to go through the whole processing editing and like i it would just be a bit draining now I can finish turn the recording equipment off go and have something to eat watch telly it's like yeah cool it's done and then I wake up in the morning and for the first hour hour and a half before breakfast I work on editing and uh, processing and do that stuff um, they're not all uploaded in that time but usually within an hour I can get most of the editing done and the processing depends on how long the recording is of course and then I have my breakfast. 
But then after my breakfast, after watching a bit of telly or whatever, I'll, I'll come back and I'll maybe do a bit more uploading, make an image. Uh, what I do is I... I transcribe the recording and then I create an image based on the transcription PDF and I also although I haven't done it recently I will go back to that is I'll be making descriptions and tag words as well based on the contents of the PDF file uh, of the transcript so I'm using AI to do the transcription. That takes doesn't take a huge amount of time. Um, so well, I think one day I, I know I've done it before, but I might do it again. Actually, go through the whole process. Maybe maybe what I'll do is I will make a different recording. Just just whatever it is, and then I'll st I basically. I'll start from then and I'll show you and I'll go through the whole process of what I do and you can see the things that I go through to do it go through it's not hard but you know what all the different um, the different I don't know processes or the the different levels of excitement you know one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And because I do it regularly, I don't need to have it on the wall what to do next. But sometimes if I don't do if I don't do a recording for a there's been times I haven't done a recording for a few weeks. It's not often, but occasionally. And I come back to it, it's like, okay. What do I do? I haven't used this editing software for a while. What do I do now? I uh, I'm a bit like that when I make a video of me on camera because it's a lot of kerfuffle to turn that into an actual video to put onto YouTube. Uh, Add it on. And I just... The problem is... I've started making... Well, not a problem, but I make started making YouTube videos of the... Uh, what is it? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I started making YouTube versions of the podcast. But actually making a video itself rather than just uploading. And they don't get many views. Uh, yesterday's ones had five views on YouTube. The one before that had 22 views. So that was from... Wednesday and that's me on camera uh, the one the one before that's 13 then 13 11 30 41 29 so hardly anybody's actually watching my videos which is kind of I'm not, I'm not surprised but I do have 1186 subscribers so I thought I'd have more than five views of a video um, <laughs> it's so people are listening on podcasts and not when you it's, it's just such a difference between the plays on the podcast and the views on a video on YouTube uh, I think if I actually did a lot of video 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 you know me on camera and I just stuck to it and did one every single day regardless I would build up an audience I guess I don't know I mean I did I've done it before and it worked out okay but I don't yeah who knows so what we well, what back to the question all right so I've answered Diana's question um, Hillary says what would your spirit animal be oh not would it be what is it I've done I've done a I've got a spirit a spirit animal in nineteen no in two thousand and five, I went to uh, a festival. It's not like a f big festival. It's a it's a small festival thing called Buddhafield East. In 
he was either in Essex or Suffolk, I don't know, it's in a field and there was loads of tents and big stuff, you know, um, with stuff in it and uh, I'm not really describing this very well. And there was a, yeah, there was a, a sh is it a shamanic thingy? where we went to travel to and discovered our spirit animal and mine was a penguin which explains why I sometimes use images of penguins in my pictures of my podcasts I mean these days a lot of it's pictures of dogs and Jack Russells and stuff but penguins were a, a penguin uh, let me think, I'm trying to think, it made sense to me at the time. So we did this shamanic journey and yeah, I was a penguin. Now I, to me, I could kind of see that in a way of <laughs> my minimum amount of knowledge about penguins is they're quite determined. I don't give up easily. Now, technically, you could say I give up easily because I do stop and start a lot of different things. But I never stop the one thing, the main thing. You know, I kept this going for 18 years now, doing, making podcasts and stuff. And I've kept this one podcast going for six years, over six years now. Uh, is it six years? 90, uh, 90, it was 1843, March 2018, it's now May 2024, so yeah, for six years, um, so there's that, people have said that about me in the past, that I am, I don't know what the word is, but keep going, I keep going, I don't give up. And I was like that in sales. I didn't give up. I was relatively successful in a sales job because I wanted to. Oh, it was not about. Uh, okay, it was. It wasn't about winning against the customer. That was never my thing. You know, I, I was. I always had the. Always, <laughs> I don't know, always, but. I like the idea of a win-win situation. So, you know, it's a weird noise. I think I'm turning into a pig. So I get the I you know I would get the deal. I would get the the order, whatever you want to call it, of insurance. But then a customer would get a better price than they're currently getting. They would get a good deal, and I would get the the business. So. You know, it's a win-win for me. At the same time, it was nice to beat other people on the sales floor. And I'm not really a pridey person, but there was, there was two times I felt quite good about myself at work. Two main times, uh, and both were the same thing. One, it was, uh, I remember I was doing the selling mobile phone contracts and giving away free phones and that was outward calling as well. So that was, wasn't easy. And uh, I came in on a Monday. I'd been working there for three weeks, I think. And I came in on a Monday and the managers were just staring at me like the team leader, the sales leader, and the boss, and a few people sitting around were just staring at me, like, including the top seller. I was like, what's going on? And I said, what's that? And they pointed at the board on the wall, which was the leaderboard of sales, top salespeople, and I was number two out of about, there wasn't a lot of people there, probably 30, 30 people. I was number two, and they're like, how? I thought it was a bit rude. I mean, how? I'm good. 
I didn't know it was good, but I said, how? And the reason that I, it wasn't that I got more sales than anybody else, is that people didn't cancel them. There was uh, a female there that, Sean, her name was actually, I remember. Because I met someone else in my next insurance, my next sales job that had the same name, spelt the same way. And she corrected me. She said, it's Sian, not Sean. I said, sorry, Sean. She said, it's Sian. And I think I called the other one Sian. She said, no, it's Sean. Very complicated. I think they both had red hair as well. Yeah. So anyway, she was getting more than double my sales. And she was still number one on the board by a little bit because half of her sales were being sent back. People were just cancelling because what they do is they'd phone them up afterwards. So we'd get the order and then a different person would phone up and say just to confirm the details because they were sending an expensive phone in, a, you know, make sure it's all correct. Bank details, all that stuff. And 50% of her sales were just being declined because people didn't want them, really. But they liked, they liked talking to her. And she was a good salesperson, but they, because they double-checked, I don't know, but she was just, she got loads. She still got more sales than me at the end of it as well because she was a top. I never, I never got close to her being at the top, but there wasn't a lot in it. But I stayed at number two for the rest of the time that I was there. And that was quite a nice feeling. Quite a nice feeling that was. And a very similar thing happened in the insurance at Churchill. I was there, started there in September. And I wasn't very good at the job. I really wasn't. I was good at the talking part for some reason. But the knowledge base and all that stuff, I just wasn't particularly good until I think it was March or April something like that something changed so I got through it took me about four or five months after training and I think it was maybe February March I don't know and I can I come in and again number two on the board I ended up being number one sometimes as well in, in the future but I went from being like pretty much the last on the board or not even seen to being to the point where I wasn't sure if I was even going to keep my job because I wasn't getting enough sales to being number one or number two rather and there was someone that worked there called Jody and I really, really got ahead of him. I sometimes I think he has to be, he had to be on holiday for me to to win, because he was way better. And um, because of my position there, I was I did quite well and had a bit of respect I think from the the team leaders and that. And I was semi being trained up to be a team leader, kind of semi. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but. I was, I started listening to calls and marketing people's calls and I even got a chance to listen to the top salespeople so that I can improve my, my selling. And I did, I listened to Jody's calls and he was just way better than me. And I'll be honest, way better than I'd probably ever be. And I was good. I was really, when I was really good, but he's... He had something special. Um, I can't really put my finger... I kind of figured part of it out, but he... There was a confidence that he had that I, I never had. I'm not saying I could never have it, but he had more confidence than anybody else. But also with the knowledge. I think some people come in with confidence but not know what they're doing, and they'd get loads of sales, and then eventually people are, you know they'd end up getting sacked because they were selling uh, car insurance to people with vans, industrial vans or things like that, you know. 
and playing around with the system so they could get a cheaper price, taking shortcuts and cheating and stuff. Um, so they could, there's, I, don't know, I suppose there's the difference between confident and arrogant. And Jody was confident. It was so good. Uh, the same happened with when I did my second job, second insurance job. There was a bloke there. There was there was a table of people that were always the best. I sometimes got on that table, but I was I was in the top. Oh, I guess I was in the top five percent of the company sales, but I wasn't the top. Um, one bloke. He was well ahead of everyone, but he was always cocky and I think arrogant as well. And he was one day he was cheeky to the boss. The boss, the big boss of the company came upstairs because it was a privately owned company and then they sold it to a bigger company. This is a bloke that used to just put, create companies, build them up and then sell them. Uh, this is what he did, and he was very, very rich man. He came, <laughs> he came upstairs, and he told uh, one of the, he told this top salesperson to keep it down. And he cheeked him. He said, "Oh yeah, whatever." And thinking he could get away with it because he was a top seller, and he got sacked on the spot. Get your stuff and get out. In front of everybody. He thought he was joking. And he wasn't joking. Like no. Out. He just didn't care. He's like no. It's like you just say. You, you sacked your best salesperson. And it was weird. But then there was this two people that I remember. That you wouldn't think would even sell anything not not because they didn't look like salespeople because it doesn't matter what you look like on the phone but they just it, it was effortless to them effortless one of them was pretty much a maths genius I got on well with all of them actually I really got on well with him and he's a lovely bloke but he'd be doing maths like working out stuff and equations and stuff just in between calls just to keep his mind active and he'd sell easily put no effort in and another bloke would just be sitting there reading a the paper it's sold so easily it's like do you want it or not that was his attitude do you want it or not do you want it okay I'll do that then he didn't try and convince anyone of anything and he was, again, he was in the top, he was in the top, like, five people, not five percent, but he was in, he was on that table the whole time. That table had about ten people on it. And he was, he had his, he had his fixed seat. And he was always, like, number two, number three on the leaderboard. It was like, I was never that relaxed. I was always, ugh. And some might think, well, what's that got to do with your spirit animal? See, the good thing about these questions is I can see them on the screen and it keeps bringing me back to what I'm supposed to be talking about. Um, wow. I'm sorry, Hillary. It's, it's complicated. I don't know how I ended up talking about... And the third insurance company, i just got to mention this because it's now on my mind. He was another one that was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and I sat next to him, and he was so good, and he was cheeky, cheeky to everybody, but in a way that, it was one of these people that can get away with it. He'd be rude, but it didn't sound rude when he said it, and he'd be rude to the customers, but again, it, I'd listen to his calls, and they'd be laughing. And he was the number one seller for years before I got there. He was just the, and I overtook him one week and he was very annoyed with that. <laughs> he was very annoyed. 
but I, was, I wasn't one that's, I wasn't, I, I was, I don't know, in that, that was like the end of my work in life, to be honest, it's, well, at the time, I wasn't particularly well, so I, I had good weeks and not so good weeks, and I did one week where they, they took away 50% of my bonus because there was uh, an error. No, they did. This is so ridiculous. It was, it was, they listened to the call, marked the call. I didn't make any mistakes, but they marked the call saying I didn't ask the question correctly. And the own, well, not the owner, but the big boss of the department of the company I think actually he was the not CEO but he was in charge of the that office I say office that call centre I don't know how many there's probably 150 people working there I reckon at the time and he said to us it doesn't matter about asking questions exactly it's got to flow it's got to be a conversation as long as you get the correct information, you don't mislead and all that stuff. But I lost 40% of my bonus and I was so annoyed that, and my friend, it happened to my, my the person, a really good seller as well, it happened to him one week and he went on strike. Didn't sell anything for about four days. Didn't even try to sell anything. And he said, look, You've been, you've mugged me, and I felt the same way. And I remember my team leader took me into the office, and he, cause he said, "Look, I don't know what's going on with you." And he said, "You look like you want to punch me." I said, "No, but I feel like I've been mugged. You've mugged me. You know, I've earned that money." And this is at a time when I was getting paid much less so this is 2012 2013 I was getting paid less than I'd been paid in 2002 doing exactly the same job because in 2002 I was getting 24,000 a year so I was on 12,000 basic and I was doubling my money every year every week you know, so I was getting 24 grand plus a year from that. And then when I was at the next insurance job, I was getting 25 grand a year with bonuses and stuff. I don't know what I did with that money. I just wasted it. But and I didn't have a lot of money to pay out for either, like, in, you know, rent and stuff. But then when I moved to this place, I had... I was getting paid, I think it was 13 and a half grand a year, plus a bonus, which came to not a lot, to be honest. I mean, I did have, I saw one of my pay slips, because I was looking for the, I was looking for my Argos card, just, it's gone missing. But I, I found some pay slips from that company that I was at last, and it was like just under a fourteen hundred and thirty-three pound take home. So I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't that all the time. Maybe it was. So I guess I was doing okay, but but that would have been I'd have lost probably for that for that month. If it had been that month, I would have lost. I mean, thirteen hundred pound. That's like just over a, a thousand pound. Thirteen and a half thousand pound. Yeah. So at the time, I think the minimum wage was probably about twelve thousand or something. So it didn't pay a huge amount of tax on that. I think the minimum wage is now seventeen thousand a year. Or, no, it's, it's an hourly, so it's like £11 an hour or something. Uh, back then it was probably about £8 an hour, or 8 50 
maybe less, I don't know. But it's weird because I used to work for £1.90 an hour when I was in my early 20s. And when I was in the bakery, when I was a kid, I used to get paid 75 pence an hour. 75 pence? Still had more money than I have now <laughs> when I was a kid. It's amazing. So I... Again, I've gone off track. Okay, so... Penguin. That would be my spiritual... My spirit animal would be a penguin. And... There's something about, like, determination I think I have. And I keep going regardless of what gets thrown in front of me. I get slowed down. I do. I get sidetracked. Yep. But I always come back. I always manage to get back on track eventually. Maybe not during the recording when I'm fo supposed to be focusing on something and I'll go off somewhere else. But as far as making the recordings and that's why the, the routine is quite important because now when I finish this, I just turn everything off. I forget about it. And then tomorrow morning, the only problem is I've forgotten what I talked about. So although I'm listening to parts of it to edit it, you know, unless I've kind of uh, remember roughly what the topic was, I have to kind of listen to a bit more to get the topic back. Uh, for that sense, it's easier when I'm doing it straight away. With this, it's easier, just Q&A Friday, isn't it? But, I mean, this might, I don't know, should I do any more of these? Because, but then to be fair, I haven't done many questions, have I? And I've already been talking for 50 minutes or whatever, 45 minutes. I've done two questions. And to be, f yeah, one of them wasn't actually a question, but I turned it into a question. So thanks for that message, Hillary. I got one from Kathleen. Got a boring question for you, Jexon. I'm an Aussie. And I was wondering if the fields that you walk through with your Vinny are privately owned property that the public somehow has a right to access or are they public dog exercising areas or what? Um, cheers. Um, I don't know. I think... See, in, in the UK, or in, yeah, I say the UK, I, I think that it also would include Wales and Scotland. Um, I don't know about Northern Ireland and the Isle of Man and the Isle of Wight and other places off the shores of this landmass of ours, but there are places where the, the property's owned privately, but there are public footpaths that the public are allowed to walk on and some of those public footpaths are a little bit invasive a little bit I, I, I feel towards people's private space and I mean I know some people will argue well, why, why, why would they need to have all that land for themselves or whatever but I think mean, there's some <laughs> some places I've seen it on the news uh, where there's been like a bit of arguments and a bit of law solicitors and lawyers getting involved where there was a footpath literally going down the side of someone's house by their kitchen window. And people were just stopping in the garden and having, having a break. Like people they didn't know. Complete strangers that were rambling or, uh, you know, going for walks and stuff. So I think that wouldn't be particularly pleasant to live somewhere where people were walking past the kitchen window, you know. if But then if you live... If you live in a like a normal road in this country, 
You've got people walking past all the time because there's pavements outside most houses. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so basically, I don't know. Should we, let me do some research. Let me do some research. How many public footpaths paths are there on private land? UK. If I just put UK. Public rights of way, a landowner. This is a government, blimey, government website. As the owner or occupier of land with a public right of way across it, you must keep the route or route visible and not obstruct or endanger users. See, that's the barbed wire out of the out of the question then. Uh, and it's even got it gives you a definitive maps that are legal records. Wow, there's a map here. 46 pages long and this is what is a definitive map it's all legal speak this is I guess for people who want to go to court if you know or for people I don't know who for anyone wow I'm not reading that I'm just trying to see this is way with public rights away Wow, this is, this is if if you use signs to warn out users of any dangers that are not obvious, such as slurry lagoons. So you can do that. You can put up signs. Um, you can put up warning signs if it helps people, but you're not allowed to erect misleading signs, such as signs about absent bulls. <laughs> uh, bulls, not bulls. Bulls. It's an offence. So if you put down um werewolves live here you might get in trouble or if you put down quicksand and there's no quicksand but at the same time if you don't put down a quicksand sign and there is quicksand then that's well it's just not very friendly is it really so you can put up warning signs i mean as far as electric fences there are electric fences around farms and some fields that have uh, stock, you know, like cows and um, water buffalo and uh, ostriches and bears and stuff. So they might have some like little electric fences, but they're just, which, you know, public shouldn't really touch. But it's just a little tingle. It's like, ooh, you know, rather than, ooh. UK park so you UK path so put footpath bridleway and byway whoa okay how's this for stats 140,000 miles of footpaths in the UK all available to walk on legally 20,000 miles of bridleways in the UK and 16,000 miles of national cycle network. Again, we're talking about the UK, so that could be anywhere in the UK. I mean, the UK is a big place. England, the landmass, Wales, Scotland. I, I'm guessing a lot of those footpaths would be, well, they'd be in countrysides, but probably huge amounts in Wales and Scotland I'm guessing uh, it is a guess I don't know what um, I don't know what a bri I don't know what a bridleway is anyone anyone know what a bridleway is what's a bridleway so bridleway bridleway Bridleway. Bridle path. Okay, a bridal a bridal path. This is Wikipedia says. A bridal path, also bridleway, equestrian trail, horse riding path, 
ride, bridle road or horse trail, could be any of those, is a trail or thoroughfare that is used by people riding on horses. Okay. Um, why don't I just put horse trail, horse road? So yeah, so bridleways. Blimey, there's still quite a bit of... Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't, didn't know people still rode horses. Have they not heard of cars? So yeah, um, in answer to your question, I think the answer, Kathleen, is... I still don't know. I'm pretty sure it. they are public. There are signs, I'm pretty sure they say public footpath. But, um, yeah, I I, I, they're well worn, if you know what I mean. They're well worn, and it's, I've seen farmers on their tractors, riding their tractors and mowing the lawn or whatever they do with their, with their farms. And, you know, usually they just wave to me shout sometimes they shout put your pants on but you know sometimes it's just like hello so i say hello it's a wave i assume they're saying hello they could be saying could be saying anything i suppose could be saying did you watch netflix last night i don't know why they would ask that but and anyway so well they could you could be shouting tell us more about the insurance jobs you had haven't heard enough about them today. Just tell us more. No, I'm doing this Q and A Fridays. So I'm very focused, uh, focused uh, on this. I'm pretty sure it's private. So it's both. It's both private owned land with a public access walkway. So it's both. But saying that, I don't know. I thought that all farms were privately owned in the UK I might be wrong but I thought they were all owned by landowners diff different ones and um, I think sometimes farms are rented out to farmers sometimes the farmers own the land again I don't know much about it so it's the answer is both I guess and um, it wasn't a boring question. That was an exciting question, Kathleen. Thank you. So thank you to Kathleen, Hillary and Diana. So I've answered those questions. So that's all of those. Um, let's see if there's anything from... Um, bum, 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 bum. Thank you. Da, 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 da. Is episode uh, okay? Right, so there's nothing there. So if I go to the top of the page, because I did post another one today saying um, that I would be doing. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I'm pretty sure I did. It seems to have disappeared. Oh. Just that was 22 hours ago. Wow, shows you how early I get up in the morning, doesn't it? Unless it was yesterday, that no, would have been yesterday, wouldn't it? 22 hours ago would have been what six o'clock in the evening yesterday. I didn't get up at six in the evening. This is the last question, you'd be happy to know. So, only three questions. I mean, that's why it's the recording so short. So now you know how to make the recording short. You know, I was thinking, if there's a specific subject you would like me to talk about, you know, an in-depth, I mean, I'm, I could do that as well. Not, not, not like a special every week talking about a subject, but just generally, if there's something that you really would like to know more about, um... You know, I guess there's a few people maybe about the stats. Maybe you'd like to know more about my toenails. I don't know. Just whatever. So here's Robin. 
Robin posted a comment saying, Hi, Jason. What's your biggest pet peeve? One of the things that really peeves me off is getting asked about my biggest pet peeve. That's a, No, I'm joking. Now, I think one of my biggest peeves is I can't stand answering questions. I really, really can't stand it. Now, I'm trying to think. Okay, I've got a few, but my pet peeves have changed over time. One of the things that used to really, really wind me up, really wind me up, was noise. Neighbours, noisy neighbours, because I've had decades of them over the years. But as I got older, and because of a few conflicts and a few issues, I've managed to calm myself down. Vinny? Yeah, I used to get really wound up by noisy neighbours. Even when I moved in here, people slamming doors. It still, still winds me up a little bit, but I kind of got used to it. But more recently, since I've had Vinny, he, he, he reacts every time a door gets slammed. Even though I've got the front, my living room door closed. Uh, the doors, because they put new doors in a few years ago and they're heavy, big old heavy doors, which they close on their own. I mean, I know it's a fire, it's a fire door. It's supposed to, they're supposed to close on their own. You know, be able to close on their own. So I understand, you know, and they're heavy and they're, they're really good doors. But they absolutely smash closed. They're really banging. It shakes the building. It shakes the building. Uh, if they're, especially if they're wide open and they get left to slam, proper shake the building. Not as much as, okay, it's not like an earthquake, but it's definitely shakes. It's like, ooh, ooh. And he, he barks because he, I guess not only can he hear it, and it probably sounds louder to him, but he got, he's got the, I guess, the feeling. He can feel it as well. And the, the problem now is because we've got some new people moved into my friend's flat. I think he, Vinny, thinks that my friend's back. Uh, which is, could be bit heartbreaking really because he, he I think he th does think that he's back also his dog the dog Logie he thinks maybe Logie's back so when he hears that door close or slam he reacts really gets excited because he's thinking his uncle Luke's going to come up and play with him or Logie's going to come up well they always came up together usually so even last night, we were walking towards where I live and the lights were on in his flat. Well, what used to be his flat. It'll always be his flat to me in a way, I suppose. Uh, nearly nine years of knowing him, living there, I guess it's normal, but it's not his flat anymore. But he could see the lights were on and he was getting so excited. And I was just like, oh, I'm sorry, mate. It's not, it's, it's not who you think it is. Because he used to, when we used to come and he used to try and go in there. Like every day, every time he came up and down the stairs, he'd try and get into that flat because he wanted to go and see his uncle or go and see Logie. That was, he stopped doing that now. Um, but yeah. So, I don't know, what was I saying? What was I, yeah, noise, that used to be my biggest thing. Pet peeves now, speeding, <laughs> speeding motorists, cars at speed. As a pedestrian, I know I understand that I can't see the world through a, a motorist's eyes because I've never driven, never had my own car. I've had some driving lessons, so I have driven on the road technically, um, but I've never been in full control because they do have control of the car if they need to, don't they, on the other side. Um, it was weird because the first one, I said to him, I remember the driver, I said, why, why, is, why is there two steering wheels? And he said, well, this is just 
for me something to hold on to in an emergency. I can stop the car. And I said, why, why, is, why am I sitting on the wrong side? Why am I in the passenger seat? He said, that's fine. It's just the way the car's built. I found out later that it was just a toy wheel. I wasn't driving it. <laughs> it was a pretend steering wheel. And I was in the passenger seat. And he was just basically driving. And I was, he, was, he wanted to see whether or not I could keep focused and where you know if i'd be i'd be able to do the pedaling and stuff and i must have realized that he i think he wasn't a very good dri uh, driving instructor to be honest because i don't know i should have noticed when he said to me that every time you put the accelerator on and you start to speed up you have to go vroom vroom and i thought I've seen people drive before. I don't ever remember seeing them do that. Vroom, vroom. So I'm doing it. I'm going, yeah, vroom, vroom. And he's laughing. So I'm thinking, oh, he's clearly must have thinking of a joke or thinking of something, seeing something funny. Always seem to coincide when I go vroom, vroom. And it was like, when you turn him right, you have to say, I'm now turning right. You have to say it twice. I'm now turning right. And he said, you still have to put your arms... He said, you used to be on a bike. I said, yeah. He said, well, the best way to learn to drive a car is if you do it what you did on a bike. I said, well, there's no pedals. He said, no. What you do is when you turn right, you do say, I'm turning right. I'm turning right. But also you put your right arm out. And you turn left, you put your left arm out. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. I said, but I'm on the left-hand side, because in the UK you drive on the right. I was in the passenger seat. So I can go right, and it was like hitting him in the face, my hand, which he didn't seem to like. And uh, then I couldn't do left because the glass was in the way. He said, well, you could put the window down. I said, I don't know, I don't want to. He said, why? I said, it's cold. It's cold out there. He said, well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just... So it's just he said, no, it's cold. He said, but how are people going to know you're turning left? Well, couldn't we indicate? Couldn't we use the indicate lights? And he said, okay, then. Okay, good. So, well, to do indicating lights, what you have to do is say, indicate left on... And then indicate light, and then indicate left off when you've when we've done the turn, and indicate right on, and indicate right off when we've done that. You have to say it out loud, and the car just does it for you. I said, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, it's fine." So uh, I didn't pass my test. I didn't didn't. So I never never managed to drive. But as a passenger, not as passenger, I don't like being a passenger really. But as a, a pedestrian, I mean, I talked about this the other day, I think. That's one of my pet peeves, is, is speeders. Especially when they're not getting anywhere. They're, they're speeding just for the sake of it. And I don't know, it's something... Yeah, I'm not, not a big fan of people at speed. I mean, I never, never really understood why why cars can go as fast as they can. I know on a motorway you can do, is it 70? In Germany, I, f I think it's part, some part of the world, I think in Germany, is it 120 or something? I don't know. But in the UK, I think 70 is the maximum on a, on a motorway. How many people stick to that? Not many, probably. I mean, if I could actually have some kind of camera on my chest like a small camera that read people's number plates and read the speed they were going and also clocked the destination and I got paid one pound per person that was speeding over the limit 
even if it was just a mile mile over the limit you know 31 miles in a 30 30 minute or whatever although i'm not sure if you get in trouble for that anyway i don't know if it has to be a certain amount over but so just you know if i got just one pound I could walk up and ra- I could walk around. I could walk to town and back, which would take me um, that'd be four hours probably. Two hours there, two hours back, or walk to the the shops anyway. Uh, and I'd probably, I reckon, I'd make myself thousand pound at least. I'd catch at least a thousand cars in four hours that were speeding, that were over the limit, over the speed limit. Seriously, and it's so it's it's weird because the people and those people that like to speed, like they get so annoyed when someone drives slowly. They're the dangerous ones, the ones that are driving slowly. But they're driving the correct speed for this road. But dead ones are cause accidents. Accidents because they're just going so slow. It's because the cars in front of them and the cars behind them are trying to speed. And because they're going the normal speed, 30 miles an hour for this road, and the car behind is impatient, so they're trying to overtake when they're not allowed to overtake, and which can cause crashes, you know? Yeah, but they're driving too slow. They're driving the right speed. Thing is, 30 miles an hour is quite slow. If you're used to driving at 60 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour. And I I think there shouldn't be fines. You know, all these like, they keep getting fines off us for, for breaking the speed limit. It should be harsher punishment. <laughs> For for people that really break the speed limit, not for someone that does forty in a thirty mile zone, or someone that does fifty in a forty mile zone, but someone that does fifty in a thirty mile zone, lose their license. Bada boom, see ya. We want to be ya. Depending on the circumstances, if it's an emergency situation, emergence emergency situation then fine but then i do think like what if they need to get to the toilet so i can see both sides if you're in your car you're near the poo you've got acts you know it's, if you're walking down the street you need the poo you kind of need to get home quick if you're in a car you can get home quick you've got the the ways the means to do so but yeah speeding uh, peeves, biggest peeves. Rude people is another one. People that moan about sp- people that moan about drivers that speed, that go over the speed limit. That just annoys me because, you know, they're trying to get to work, they're trying to do their own thing. I don't need some knob pedestrian. Like judging them, you know. What does that pedestrian know? You get get your get your get a driving license, mate. You know, join join the twentieth century. <laughs> so yeah, um, I don't know other things. Rudeness, I guess. Yeah, you know, some people are just rude for no reason, like oh. But then I try to get into that zone of, well, we don't know what's going on with them. I still go back to when I was in a call centre, had a really rude man. He was rude right from the beginning. Every question he'd say like, why are you asking that for? Well, I need to know your name, don't I? You know, it's a, it was insurance is a legal document and you can't get a quotation for the insurance without putting their details in like registration the kind of car it is how many miles they do any accidents or claims things like that yeah you need to have that information you need their address all those things their age their date of birth that affects the price 
you can't just sort of say hello you know like quite a few insurance i mean actually i did i'm not sure if i said it or one of my colleagues said it but someone said i don't like all these questions uh, I don't want to. I don't want lots of questions. I just want a quote for the insurance. And he said, "Oh, two thousand pound." Then <laughs> he's just like, "It might be me that said it. it might, I'm going to give it away. It might be someone else that said it." But he just said, "Yeah, it's two thousand pound." He said, "What do you mean? It's two thousand pound? You said you want a quote for insurance, but you don't know what kind of car I've got." I know. You don't know how many no claims bonus I've got. I know. You don't know if I've had any claims or not. The fact that I've had no claims. I know I don't. You don't know that I live in a really safe area. I know I don't. Ah. Oh. So. We're going to have to ask you some questions to get that information. And then we can get a quote and then you can decide if you want it or not. But this bloke, I didn't go through that route with him because he was rude right from the start. And I started being a bit coarse, with, not coarse, but I wasn't friendly with him either, which is a bit unprofessional on my side, but hey. The very last question, or one of the very last questions on the whole thing was uh, medical conditions. And he said, oh, I've just been diagnosed with Parkinson's. You know what? Something inside me changed towards him. And I know I don't know who who what happened, but instantly we became friends. We live together now. <laughs> we, we don't. We don't. Um, but yeah, we we got married. We, we instantly, like as soon as he said that, all the animosity, the the just the pointless tension and stuff or whatever, I was gone. Like. Because I felt, I felt for him. Because uh, I don't know how he's feeling, but it's not a far fetch to be able to realise that if I was in his situation, the last thing I'd be want to do is making a phone call for car insurance. And this is before the internet was kind of. It's not before the internet, but car insurance wasn't really done online so much back then I mean I think you could get a quote online but then you still have to talk to someone now you can just do it all online and we he took the insurance policy and everything was gone everything was like really nice after that and we were chatting and ever since then and that was what 2002 2003 it stuck with me like 20, 20 odd years ago, when someone's being rude, someone, someone being short, someone's being maybe really nasty, maybe it's like it's a reason for that. And I may never know the reason. I don't need to know the reason. I'm just going to assume that uh, there's a serious reason for it and just let it go. And that's how I kind of have dealt with annoying people. Not annoying people, but people that are annoying. Or that I find annoying or rude or whatever. It doesn't always work, I'll be honest. Sometimes it only works after the event. But I try and help other people in a similar situation. So if someone's had someone rude and I say, well... You don't know where they've just come from or where they're about to go. You know, not to, okay, you're upset because they were rude. That's fair enough. It's fair enough to be upset by that. But the reason they were rude may be because they're about to go and visit someone in hospital or somewhere else like that. Uh, see, there's, there's so so much stuff going on isn't there so yeah i think that helped with that so that was another pet peeve i had uh probably my biggest pet peeve is vinny because he's a pet and he's a peeve peeve of mine his barking is i had a headache earlier and his bark was going straight through my brain like lightning 
I'm guessing. It was really annoying. It's so loud. But then we had... Um, I phoned up the council today. I don't know if I've told, this, told you this already. Um, we've had problems with the lighting. No light downstairs, no light upstairs in the hallways. The communal area. It's really weird. When I say the hallways, I start thinking of where I used to live in the children's home, where the hallways were big. It's like a huge building and everything. This, this is just a little building. So it's not big, but it's still communal areas, you know. And I was talking to my one of my neighbours and he said that he was... It didn't feel safe to go out at night now because it's pitch black inside and you couldn't see if anyone was lingering around or anything. So what I did first thing, and I slipped two days ago, I tripped on Vinny on the stairs because it's quite hard to hold a torch and hold him on his lead and also hold the banister with two hands because I, you know, and also I was drinking a cup of tea. So perhaps I should have waited until after I'd finished the tea. Um, but anyway, and I was balancing a dirty sock on my head. It's just to add a more silliness. Eating a banana. So I, I phoned the council up today. I said, look, this is quite serious now. And I told them the situation. We've got two elderly men living upstairs. And me. He laughed. He said, you know spring chicken, are you? I said, that's a bit rude. He said, you're rude. I said, no, I'm not doing this. This is, this is supposed to be a serious story. I'm not doing you're rude, you're rude, and all that stuff. He said, yeah, fair enough. Uh, Did you answer all the questions? I said, well, <laughs> there wasn't that many questions to start with. Is that is that what you're doing now? You're just filling it out. It's this filler. It's all like talk about the lights and the conversation with the council. Uh, just as just to make the recording feel like there's more in it than there actually is. Like it's got more substance than is really there. I said, no, I've answered the questions. There wasn't that many questions, but I did answer fairly fully, I do believe. And... I'm talking about the lights of the council because this really happened. This is like a serious, well, not serious, but it's uh, it's something that was in, it's felt important. He said, oh, okay, fair enough. So why are you calling? I said, well, because of the lights. Uh, I called before and you said you were going to get them done on... Blimey, can you hear that? Blimey, there's a lot of shouting outside today. I have to have the windows open because it's too hot in here when I've got the door closed. So, sorry if you heard that shouting. Anyway, um, they said, I just explained the situation, uh, and they said, oh, we're sending a, we'll put it down as an emergency, and we'll send an electrician today. And they did. Within about two hours, there was an electrician here. I spoke to him because they put down my name, my telephone number as uh, contact in case they needed to speak to someone in the building. And he said the lights, all the lights were done, but they didn't fix, they didn't connect them properly. So they were new, everything was new. They put them in a few weeks ago. The lights upstairs worked for about four days or five days and then stopped working. The lights downstairs never worked. I didn't realise they'd put in new ones because I hadn't looked up. And I realised, wait a minute, there's no moths inside that one. So the other one was probably about 50 years old. This one's new. But they hadn't, whoever, connect, whoever put them in didn't connect them correctly, according to the electrician that was there today. So he said, he had all the lights on, but he said, well, I've had to put it onto manual, but it's on automatic, so they come on at a certain time in the evening, at 8 or 9 o'clock or whatever. He said, if they don't come on, then you're going to have to phone the council again. 
out of hours emergencies so they can come and and it'll be me again I'll have to come and fix them and I said okay cool so that's what I'll do hopefully they'll be on he said they should come on because they're uh, if they're connected to the, ne the next building so if the if the next building is joined to this one if the lights come on in their place then it should come in our place they're all the, the wiring's connected together it's just it wasn't connected you know it wasn't properly connected before now it is so yeah um so hopefully 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 that will be back because getting up and down them stairs is not the easiest thing. And it's, and it's weird because Vinny normally just runs down the stairs. But normally it's dark, he's like zigzags. I, sh I swear I heard him giggling like he's purposely trying to trip me up. I might be wrong. He's sleeping, he's shaking. What are you shaking for, Vin? Don't shake. You're alright, you got me. Might not be much, but you got me. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. I've done this recording. Oh, I did over an hour, so I don't know how long this is going to be. So thank you for listening. This is Q&A Friday number four. Four. I, I don't know if I put in the, the numbers I can't remember and if you want me to do another Q&A next week let me know if you don't let me know if you do let me know if you're not bothered let me know if you would prefer me to do one day a week doing another thing like I don't know what I I can't really think of anything right now off the top of my toes but if you I don't know just anything because if I'm doing these eight days a week or however many days there is in a week six days a week I will be well Vinny's started barking very very vigorously for some reason I opened the door, let him into the bedroom. He jumped onto the windowsill in the bedroom, looking out. So he's clearly heard something that's caught his ear. So I'm going to go. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Yeah, thanks for that. Do you do a few more barks to say goodbye? Do you want to say goodbye? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear.